equities end, so relatively mixed picture. We are mostly lower across the board, with the exception of the periphery with the IBEX in slight positive territory and the MIP in positive territory, to show some of the rebounds from yesterday's heavy losses. Now, elsewhere, fixed income products, they are continuing to move higher throughout the session, so goods now up over a point, with gilts up almost a point in the wake of that successful gilt auction earlier. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, European Crossover Webinar. I was uh, filling in for uh, Chris Asaro earlier on the London Colin webinar. There really hasn't been, and I was mentioning at that time, there hasn't been really that much significant news other than just a rehash of what's been going on in um, the trading of snipes between, uh, you know, the creditor side or European Commission side, as well as those from Greece. So not really anything's happened. I mean, as far as news-wise, uh, then we did go in and make a, a stab higher here in the in the dollar. Also, the euro dollar had taken quite a knock. We had actually discussed that here in the uh, London Calling webinar that we knew that thought that it was uh, that the euro could really take a good, good, nice little whack of what. 45.50 pips. And we came into some support here and we bounced off to that. Also got the dollar CAD on its highs and uh, Aussie dollar broke to new lows. So we're going and jumping up into that and uh, not really a whole lot happening here with uh, dollar yen. Also we did get the move down here in cable. Um, we were talking about a move below 155. 54.96 is 161% uh, of the recent move. So let's go on and take a look at that, jump into the two hour chart here. So you can see here that uh, cables come right down here to 54.96 and in the European, uh, in the London calling webinar, we were trading, I guess right in here, I believe, and I was looking for a move. You know, we had talked about this prior to that. We thought that uh, yesterday we could allow the market, or that we thought the market would take out the 55.25, do some stops, maybe only get into the teens and then work higher, and we didn't. So we, we mentioned earlier this morning on London calling, was that because the market had fallen back here, I think we were just below 55.50, that we felt that we would go in and break 55 even, um, which we did, and we're here at 54.96. Probably a decent place to go in and cover if you've already been in short here on uh, cable, but it's it's re remained pretty weak, but this morning uh, in the London calling webinar, it was fairly quiet here, and it was just right before Euro started getting going we were basically trading between the 10 in about 10 16 and then we made a run up to 10 35 and then we came back down and we felt that it was going to press lower but we talked about the possibility of the euro dollar extending those losses because things look so so dreary uh that being said i do think that they'll reach some type of an agreement I think there's, there's too much to be lost on both sides, although there are talks about a Grexit and those things will happen, but at the end of the day, I think that they'll come up with something. Greece is just going to have to accept more, uh, you know, more austerity. They can't afford in their situation. It's just going to be a, a big human tragedy uh, from where they stand. I saw a picture where the showing a pharmacist that they had, They've run out of so many drugs that they, like I said, that it's just a it's a difficult situation. I think that that they will go and come to some kind of a, a agreement uh, on that before before everything completely falls apart. But they're certainly close at hand on that. So um, let's go. Let's, we can go on and uh, move into the charts. As I said, not really a whole lot of news overall. Um, these are really some old headlines with EU's Juncker.
CCB's Greek bank haircut leaves room for a deal. DCB is not being as confrontational as it looks. The Eurozone ago, Monetary Authority on July 6 raised haircuts on the collateral banks used to access, access 90 billion euros of emergency loans. To Frankfurt's credit, it looks as if the central bank is pushing Greece in the single currency by stealth, but uh, that is not. But that is what the ECB is aiming. It could be. Could have been even more aggressive. So. Um, I think that eventually they'll come into some type of an agreement here and um, let's go on and move into the charts. Uh, well, actually, we're already in the charts. I was actually looking in here at, the, at a news story, so I'm just going to go on and post that real quick. It's been relatively quiet, other than what's happened here in the, in the Euro. Just a moment. But Euro came into some very nice support here, and we've seen a nice rally back off of that, or pop, you know, off of those levels. Dollar cat still pushing up here at 127. That'd be just a second. So well, let's go ahead and jump right here into the um, into the euro. And you can see here we made that trip down here to nine fifty seven. So essentially what we've done is we took out the lows from we took out the lows from 950 uh from sunday and we've come back and rebounded from this area we're trading here just uh and we'll go and jump into the half hour because I thought this was a, this was a key trigger and we talked about this yesterday and we talked about it this morning which was on the 30 minute, which was uh, the 9.57 or uh, being the, the bias pivot. So let's go ahead and jump into there. I meant 958. I don't know why I keep saying 9. I meant 1058. Can't get my mouth straight this morning. But we talk, I've talked about this, you know, coming into the into this uh, into the Asian session on Sunday. Obviously, you know, with the way the Greek referendum vote was coming out, it looked like it was going to be bad news already. So I was lining up, lining up the levels to see how bad it was going to go on and get. And it's not, uh, 1058 is what struck me here on what I believe or, or thought was going to be A bias pivot. Let's go and pull this down here. So yesterday we traded on both sides of that of that bias pivot, but you can see where we lost it 
we would lose the 1058. It would really, you know, start to accelerate on the downside. Now, late yesterday, we got back above it, but you can see here where we treaded water against this 1058. And then slowly but surely, we just started losing steam right here. As the market started sliding back down. And right now, we've got dollar cat almost right on its highs here. We've been looking at potentially of a little bit of a divergence here. If we can see crude come back, and this is at a key level here at this 2705. We'll see what, what, crude, what the dollar cat wants to do, but we're certainly right here on our highs here. Um, but we continue to go in and slide down here, and it was it stayed relatively quiet this morning, but the pressure started building, and we, when we were uh, here on the London calling webinar, we had basically just traded down here into the teens and made another run back up here at 10:35, and we're starting to slide. And so we were looking for a move down here to 10:04 and potentially going and take out the 10 even. But we did go in and reference that there was a good possibility that as we rolled into the uh, into the bounce of the European session or into the New York session, in all likelihood you would go in and see the euro dollar just going and lose a quick 45 to 50 pips because the news just isn't getting any better and we've just seen an exchange of, as I said, snipes across the board. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think that they will go in and resolve something here uh, before the whole thing comes off the tracks. But we did go in and come into this support area here, which is 960. On the two hour, we're gonna go in and short here on the 957. So let's go in and switch back in there. So you can see here, we came down here, this 957 right here, which is prior support even from the the uh, the prior prior weekend when all heck broke loose. Well, we've gone and, and staged a bit of a rally off of this 957, almost made it a 110 even. We're starting to pull back a little bit, but I think, like I said, you have to go and be careful with the euro dollar because I, I, I do believe that they're going to go on and, and reach some type of an accord. It's just going to be too much for both sides. I mean, we're hearing uh, talk of a potential Greek uh, a Brexit. Uh, it says Greek proposal would keep uh, value-added rebate for islands. Let's see, give me just a moment. So we did see some infra some lines come across the wires. A Greek proposal to Eurogroup on Tuesday will not differ significantly uh, from reform the Greeks rejected in referendum. But they're going to have to show more changes, so we're going to see what's going to come, because if that's the case, then that's not going to get resolved. But it says the Greek proposal would keep uh, 
VAT rebate for islands, leave value-added tax for restaurants at 13%, and contain limited cuts in defense spending from the German paper Süddeutsche Zeitung. But we did go on, as I said, we came off of this uh, level here, and we're just trading now in the middle of this new range. But we did expect this lower price here in, in the year dollar, but you got to be careful trading the year dollar, because I, I do believe that they will reach some type of an accord. I just think that there's too much at risk for both sides for them not to go and do it. We'll go on and switch into dollar cat, which is actually currently on its highs. Switch in there. Right here, we may have run already to this level and kind of backed off just a little bit. And we'll look at the significance here, right here. We're here at this level. You can see a lot of touches right across here. Here is the level here at the 2674. We've come quite a ways. Unless we don't get a Greek deal, I mean, unless we don't get a deal and the dollar just takes off like a wild maniac, um, the market's probably going to have a little bit of a trouble here at this level. I would think, but we're certainly pushing it right now here on our highs here on the on the uh, dollar CAD. Now, part of this was on the idea where, as I mentioned, the crude oil market had really taken a header, and crude is basically just trying to consolidate here at these lower levels. There's not really anything that you could hang your hat on to say that it's really doing much of anything. But we're certainly going, we're certainly pushing it for all it's worth here on dollar cad. And I think we did an extension. I think 2705 was 161 percent. So we'll have to see how this goes and plays out with the rest, of, uh, you know, the rest of the day. We're certainly pushing them higher now at 2714, 2717. So um, pushing this thing for all it's worth. We'll see how much further they can go in and push this, but it has really come back. It had really come quite a, quite a ways. I thought we might see a little bit of divergence. We may try and squeeze it a little bit more, but um, obviously it's going in that direction. I mean, there's a, you can't you can't argue the results here. And the run that we're seeing here in Dollar CAD. So let's go and take a look also here with uh, Dollar Yen. And Dollar Yen has stayed relatively quiet, other than this little brief burst we saw here, has stayed relatively quiet throughout this move. There just hasn't been a whole lot here with Dollar Cat here. But we've stayed in this very narrow range, which for the most part, just on a two hour bar, has stayed in about a 25 pip trading range for a good 10 hours, with the exception of this little burst here. And we actually mentioned here in the London column, we said we might even see a burst into like 90. And that might be all she wrote. Uh, I don't expect the necessary to fall so hard, but uh, it's just doing a whole lot of nothing at this point. And we're going to move in here to the Aussie dollar on the two hour chart.
So we've gone and made new lows here in the Aussie dollar. We pointed out here that um, the 74.83 was a key weekly level, and also the 74.87 was 161% of this move here from 77.38 to 75.83. But the continued woes in China is carrying a lot more weight here and a lot more concern with the Aussie dollar. And you can continue to see this pressure here. I did not expect it to get much beyond here, the 7043. I thought maybe we might be able to, when we set this, this low here and they weren't able to take out this high, the only thing, only thing that was questionable was right here. You had this graveyard doji right there. I thought we might be able to go and hold them here as we came down here and we finished up finished up here close to this this level here at about 7485 thought there was a chance we could work higher we came in here and we tested 75 we end up like on a graveyard doji and then the market really pushes and stops here as the whole dollar index and all has decided to go on and make a bit of a run. I really didn't expect us to see, I mean, we're only about 60 pips off, but it is a key weekly level. We'll have to see if we see some type of, a, you know, a little bit of a turnabout. You know, the key thing is that, obviously, this is another reason why I expect the Greece thing to get resolved. It's, it's causing a big woe across multiple financial markets. And I've been the one that was beating the drum on dollar strength going forward. But that was being predicated on the continued strength in non-farm payrolls as far as wage growth. We didn't see that this, um, this last Friday. We had a good number but we didn't see the continued wage growth. And so the dollar, we, that's where you didn't see that big reaction from the euro dollar or any other markets, even when I thought with the dollar cad that we could really you know, blow up and really take off. So we pulled back, but the, but the continued woes and the Greek referendum vote has really placed a lot of pressure on financial markets. Uh, obviously, they already had the woes before in China, but it's only exacerbated that. And I think that there's going to be, as much as uh, some of the Euro group or Euro uh, members are ready to kick Greece out, I think that in the meetings, I think they're going to realize that this, this could really kind of spin itself out of control for them if they're not careful. And I think, like I said, without that, you're seeing, you're starting to see this play out right now. And the dollar's starting to really, you know, take, catch a bid. And I, like I said, I thought this would play out, but on the backdrop of great NFP, when we didn't get that great NFP as far as wage growth, we did see the dollar kind of pull back a little bit. And I thought, okay, well, we're probably going to take, you know, a little bit of a hiccup, but, as I said, it once one thing's feeding on another, which is feeding on another, and they've got the problems with China, or China has its own problems, which has continued to weigh on the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi. And now when you move into the uh, what's going on today and how this Greek mess does not seem to be able to resolve itself, that's just exacerbating the flows into the buck. Regardless, regardless of what um, you know, we didn't see the, you know, the strong wage growth that I was, I thought that we would see. I thought I would see, we would see a continuation, which would really light the buck on, light the buck on fire. And we didn't, but what's played out globally has put a bid on the dollar. And there's just not any way of getting around this. And you can see the Aussie dollar is just, is just in a, in a complete mess at this point. And I just think that um, when you look at everything that's happening right now, I think that it, those woes are going to continue to weigh on on the other economies 
And I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure for uh, the Eurogroup to find some way to get this done. And Greece is in no good situation either. They're going to have a good, strong human tragedy on their hands if they don't want to go and accept some of these measures. I think there's probably going to be a bit of a halfway meeting across the board. Greece will have to employ additional austerity, but I think that a lot, I would think, would be given by the creditors also. It's just going to be a big mess, I think, if they don't, if, if they don't come up with some deal. And I have to believe that they're going to come up with some deal. That's what I think. I, I, this thing will really spin off the tracks if we don't. Not for the U.S., because the U.S. economy, we're in great shape. So the rest of you all are in bad shape. They're going to take a pretty good whack. And you've already seen that right here in the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar and other parts of the, of the globe. China's getting whacked pretty good. So, I mean, obviously it spreads around, but uh, we've got the good fundamentals here in the U.S. Not that we wouldn't be impacted to some certain extent, but not, not like the rest of the globe is going to go and be impacted. And we're seeing, that, we're seeing that play out. And you can see, look how the dollar is just continuously on the bid. We are into some key support here in the cable at 54.56. See that? Pretty good key level right here. But things are certainly going and weighing on here. We're going to come into break time, so we're going to go in and catch a break. Like I said, I already filled in for Chris Asaro on the London Calling webinar. And I got my show. Then I got two hours more after that on Blake's show, so I'm going to take a break. Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the uh, European uh, crossover webinar. And we did see a flurry of dollar buying here that we hit some stops. Um, We're going into the half hour chart just to get a little bit better read. We were trading right here at the 60, as I told you, we had uh, had this. We had, um, as I mentioned, we had already come back here in the euro and we started to slide right back down. And we were just trading at about 60 and then we hit some stops and flew right under 50 which triggered some stops up here in the dollar CAD, which took us up here to 27.30, right here. We saw the euro start to go on and bounce right back here. We've seen that it just looked like we just hit some stops here. Now we're starting to come back a little bit here on, on the uh, euro dollar. Also, Dyson Bloom just said they're going to do whatever it takes to strengthen the euro. Um, that might provide a little bit more goose up here with the with the euro dollar, but we basically just hit some stops in here. I mentioned before on the dollar CAD that we're at a fairly key level. You can see here that on the Aussie dollar, we also went and dipped to another low here, and we kept on pressing right here in in the cable. I'm going to open these up a little bit just to get a better eye on this, but we made a run. We didn't quite make it to this 942. And we'd already taken out the lows right here of the prior Sunday. Not this last Sunday, but the prior Sunday before that. So we're now we've had a chance to go and pop back up a little bit. This could uh, ultimately turn out to be a little bit of a hammer bottom here on the euro. Moving into the dollar CAD. We've had a heck of a run here, and we talked about us being at that right there, 27.13, which is where they were at before they ran to a little spike up. 
But we talked about the market being a little bit overdone here. Once again, if we do see that hammer bottom in the euro, might get a little extra uh, selling here in dollar CAD. But the market is quite a bit overdone here at this level. And once again, you can't really make the argument that you have to short it other than just at the fact that it really is quite overdone and we came into that 27.15-ish area here. Now, dollar yen has basically done a whole bunch of nothing here. Now, we'll go and take a look at these on the two-hour chart. And we'll also go and take a look at um, the gold and the crude and the spoos before we move into the uh, first hour of the morning, uh, morning edge, which isn't very far off. Like I said, I'm trying to even or spread everything out because these last few days, and i got to cover Chris's show for the most of the week, I'm just not getting that much sleep. I'm getting up just a little after midnight and then having to prep for Chris's show, then do his show for an hour and a half, then a two-hour break, then do my show, and have to go three hours. So I'm just having to, you know, use these breaks to go on and pat, to uh, um, basically keep me going. It was a little bit stretching early this morning. There really wasn't any real news, so we were just looking at these levels. No questions either. Same here this morning. So... Once again, here we are on the cable, still pressing on these lows, but right here in the key support. So we're going to switch into the two-hour chart. And Esther says, thanks for the... Uh, Devotion on the webinar. So, yeah, I appreciate that. I really do because it's, um, I'll tell you what, the second day, well, actually, I've been doing Chris's webinar since the end of last week. And I'll tell you what, this second day is really taking a little bit of a toll. Um, getting up around midnight. Uh, Dave, this is Oregon Island. Those of you who are just following me, the Euro Summit will start today at 6.15 at the Kings of the Euro Summit. will start today at 18.30. See, we're starting to see this pop up in the year dollar a little bit, and that's, like I said, off that Dice Bloom headline. They're going to do whatever it takes to strengthen the euro. So, here we are on the two hour on the euro dollar. And I, as I mentioned, once we got past that 957 right here, it was actually once we hit 959. This, they really hit the stops, and we went quickly right. I mean, just in a heartbeat, we went right. We went sub fifty in a heartbeat, and we started to climb since then. To me, I think the most prolific headline is the one where Dyson Bloom says um, they'll do whatever it takes to strengthen the euro. Now, Muscovici says Greece must show how it will avoid the worst case. Really, to me, it's all up on Greece. I really believe that. I think the Eurozone, the Euro group is going to do whatever it takes to borrow a phrase, and I don't mean that facetiously, but to try and get this deal done. But it's on Greece. It's on Greece if they don't pull this together. It, it really is. They're the ones that are going to go and suffer. So if they think they can find something in, in being – Offer nothing, well then, okay, fine, but that's going to be up on them. Um, I think that reason will strike strike uh, forward, but Greece has got to be willing to give a little bit. If they don't, if they're not really willing to give a little bit, then you're going to find people that are just going to be entrenched and say, "Screw it, we'll just deal with whatever comes down the road," and then it's really going to be a big mess, and. You know, Greece is the one that, for whatever the reason when you say, they, they're the ones that borrowed the money. If they come with that attitude that they just don't want to give anything, um, you could really see a big problem here, a big problem.
And I'm just looking at some headlines coming down the wires, it's all. Once again, this is all on Greece, whatever they, I mean, I think the creditors, of the, the, the group is going to try and do what they can to get this resolved, but um, we're going to go and see how this plays out. Now, the cable, is continuing to weaken. I mean, the cable, I, I forgot one of the guys was saying, Rich was saying the cable's in a bloodbath. And man, he's not kidding. I'll tell you what, uh, when we were on the European, uh, when we were in London calling, um, we were trading here just around 55.50. Around here, I think it was. And I felt, hey, we're gonna get sub 55. But I didn't think the wheels would come off the caboose which is essentially what we're seeing right now. This is really something else. And we've already come into this 54, 56. And it's relentless. It's absolutely relentless. I just, I, I, I'm really surprised. I think this 54, 56 is going to hold here. That's a very key level here. You look here, you see this right here? have to think you'll see some short covering here. I'll tell you what, you've really got some markets that are really under pressure and it's just been one heck of a mess. I mean, Greece has got some of these markets by the tail. And it's swinging it back and forth, left and right, upside and down, and inside and out. And I don't want to hear about any 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 news from out of the, the United Kingdom. This whole Greece thing's feeding into that, and I don't care what anybody says. And these other economies outside the U.S. they just can't handle it. They simply can't handle it. You can see here with the Aussie dollar knock on effects from what's happening in China, which is being pushed down the, the staircase or being accentuated by what's happening in Greece. It wasn't that there wasn't happening already before, but it's accentuated the downfall and the negativity. So it's it's really amazing if you think about it because I was looking for an extended, I was looking for the dollar rally to really get on its tracks a week ago. But that was predicated on the idea that we were going to see a strong NFP, which we got a good NFP, but we didn't see a strong NFP. I was looking for a strong NFP from a wage growth perspective. And that's when I was saying, get out of the way of the dollar. You're going to get run over. Well, that didn't happen and the dollar eased back some. Now here's the dollar reasserting itself. And at this point, it did make it up to 97, which is pretty key right in here. Let's go. I have reached this level, but at this point, People want dollars. They don't want to be in any of these other currencies. I mean, I could, like I said, if we would have had that strong NFP wage growth, but we hadn't, and it looked like they were going to put off the uh, the way the the first rate rise, maybe in 2016, even in even December 2015 was only a 59 percent possibility. And look, here's the dollar blowing and going to the upside. Nobody wants any of these other currencies. Rich says he thinks cable came under pressure under China. Well, yeah, I mean, but here's the deal with China. China is, they were already having some issues, but the Greek tragedy is what's, what has uh, exacerbated to the downside. So ultimately, once again, you know, it's, 
you know, a knock-on effect from the knock-on knock -on effect from China, which is a knock-on effect, you already have problems, but from, from Greece. So it goes back to the same thing again. Uh, Rich says cable is getting attacked on both fronts, Euro pound rally, and guys want a dollar. Well, yeah, I mean, that, and the crazy thing is the NFP report didn't come out as strong. That's why we saw the dollar start to ease. So the idea that the dollar is really starting to re-engage in light of an NFP that looked like it pushed things back to 2016 for the rate first rate rise, and everybody's running to the dollar, is really you know pretty unbelievable. I mean, I would say unbelievable, but it's certainly a great testimony. You know, everybody wants the safety of the dollar. But you can see here, nothing, nothing is is everything's being dragged right through the mud, mud uh, on the on the Greek mud on this issue. China, the Asian currencies, and even cable, or there's no escaping it, and everybody wants dollars. And you can already see the whack job that um, that was laid on to the crude oil market. So it's hitting it from all from all sides coming forth. As we go into the morning edge, we'll go in and look at the spoos, which we did look in London calling, and we'll also go and take a look also at the um, the gold and the T notes. But right now, it's all about the dollar at this point. Um, but we have that meeting. I have to think that they're going to come up with something. I really do, because um, Greece is going to be. And one heck of a world to hurt. And they got, they're going to have to be careful because they're going to end up getting with something they don't want. And that's just going to be the way it's going to be. And then um, I don't know what white night they think is going to come flying through, but that's going to be one country that's going to be in one big world to hurt. I think they've pushed it as far as they can push it. And at this point, I don't think it would be in their best interest to try and do that any further. They're just going to have to accept that medicine and try and get what they can out of the creditors or the euro group. Because uh, I tell you what, like I said, uh, most of those guys are pretty much fed up with Greece anyway, although I think they have to do what's right for their own selves. But if Greece wants to play that game, they're going to—they're basically quite a few of them. And I think I already saw six of the 18 eurozone ministers are ready to kick Greece out of the eurozone. That, that came across the wires this morning. So Greece really needs to go on and be careful here. So um, we're going to go and take a quick break before I go and start up for the next two hours for the, the, um, the morning edge. Like I said, usually don't take this many breaks, but like I said, uh, right now I'm having to do Chris show at 2.30 Eastern time for an hour and a half, then I'm having to do the European crossover, and then Blake's, and frankly, I, I, I need the breaks just to go and keep my my voice in check, and also, uh, it's some crazy hours right now. But Blake should be back tomorrow, which is really great news. Uh, let me go and switch over to the headlines, and then we'll be back at the top of the hour for the morning edge. <laughs> 